good morning everyone now we have a, another project in the workshop so it's Yanmar Vio 75 and it has a head gasket problem or head problem head crack problem something like that we have to so basically it runs hot it throws up water so it's good water for this suspension tank we have to pull out the remove the head, pull out the head and check the head gas gasket and uh, remove the uh, thermostat and uh, see what's wrong with this machine so probably we will do some work on the head so head will be, go to machine shop and it will be refurbished so we'll put it back together now we put this in the workshop and start <coughs> disassembling the engine As I run this thing for a few minutes, I realized it's in really poor shape and it's not well maintained. But customer says that we won't do anything about that. And it's just, even the battery is fucked. So if they put a nail here, just to keep contact. Ah, we'll see what the customer wants with that. First, what, we're gonna do is remove all the panels and the covers that are on our way so we will have more access to the engine <clears throat> panels are out of the way so I remove the hood the cover the side cover top protective panel and the forward one now when we remove the panels now we can see in <laughs> really in what shape the engine is and it's not that good. Everywhere, everywhere we look, we have some kind of a leak. Sorry about the light, because it's dark in here, and I have to use whatever I can. So we have a fuel leak somewhere here. On these lines, on the inje injectors, you can see diesel. And we have oil leak from the rocker cover. And... Oh, look at the patch on the exhaust cool professional job uh, on this side we have hydraulic fluid leak on the swing motor and inside there you have a pool of hydraulic fluid I'm not sure yet where it comes from uh, we have a unknown rattle lot of stuff lot of findings we'll see <coughs> what will the customer say will we fix all of them or just the just the overheating problem so next what I will try to do is remove the exhaust all together with the manifold so I'll get a better view on the engine head and I hope it will go easy. I hope it will go easy. It's kind of cramped in here and it's not, it's not a lot of room. Ah, uh, I got the uh, exhaust manifold removed. I got the rocker cover out, removed the uh, high pressure fuel lines. Next, 
I will remove the wiring all around, I will remove the water pump assembly and after that start to work on the rockers and uh, head bolts and we should be good to pull the head off I will just show you quick from the other side how it looks ah. so once you make some room it's it's not that bad I thought it would be more tight once you remove the exhaust you have plenty of room uh, I pulled the rocker and I pulled the caps off so these caps go on top of the valves so the rocker arm pushes the cover that and it doesn't go directly on the valve because the valve is harder than this next we're gonna remove his push rods and we're gonna put them in order so we'll check if there is any bend in them so this first two second two third and number four I realized there is no need to remove the water pump because it's mounted on the block of the smaller Yanmar engines. You need to remove the water pump because it has the same manifold going in the head and in the block. But this one, it looks like it does not. So, next, <clears throat> I will break the torque on the head bolts and pull the head down. Yes, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, around 20 something bolts. And we'll start uh, opposite direction, then it's tightening procedure. If you know the tightening procedure, so then you must know what is the opposite of that. I'll get the tools ready and start working on that. All the bolts are loose. I have to pull them out. Uh. I left the injectors. I left the injectors because I'll pull them out later and they will go to the shop also. They will be checked, probably cleaned. So. That would be all of the bolts. Now, just now, just take the head off. And how do we do that? Because that thing is tight. Now, we just need to pry it up a little bit. It's not. See, it's moving already. And here is my body that will help me to take it off. Head is removed and there is a lot of corrosion around the cylind cylinders. Uh, you can see here that uh, coolant was free to pass from this chamber to cylinder number one and two and you can see that with corrosion on the marks even on the casket. So you see everything is corroded and should be like a clean, fresh uh, metal ring around. So like it was a proper contact there, but you can see that that's not the case everywhere around the cylinders is some kind of corrosion and pity or something like that. And it's the same thing. It is the same thing on the block side. If you take a look at the block. 
it's not as bad as in, as it is on the head but number cylinder number three and four I can't exactly determine where the leak was but all of these sealing areas around the cylinder are just just corroded and you can see inside the block there uh, I would say that uh, the proper antifreeze was not used most likely never and that's why that's why this happened uh, I forgot about this I forgot to tell you about this that uh, we need to remove the high pressure fuel pump also because when the engine heats up like when it's working three or four or five hours and you shut down the engine it won't start again so the guys uh, used to uh, leave it to cool down and it starts straight away up straight away again so it's just a poor uh, poor poor performance of the fuel pump and that's no big that's nothing to be uh, amazed because it's not a bad engine it's not a bad fuel pump it's just uh, uh, work hours on this machine are just insane we have uh, what does it say here 14,000 14,197 hours and I can bet that's the original fuel pump so we'll be pulling the fuel pump out also <clears throat> so cool so we need to give the head to the shop we need to take the head to the shop we need a new gasket head gasket and we need the fuel pump done and we need the injectors done so simple not much work on this one uh, I've prepped everything for removal of the fuel pump I removed this front cover I'm not sure you will see so there is a gear inside I removed the bolt I aligned the engine uh, for the first cylinder cylinder to be in fire so it's firing first cylinder right now you can do that by rotating the engine and you will see uh, first of all you have a plug here on the flywheel there you go in the flywheel housing and inside you have marks and I'm not sure you can see number four there now it is uh, number one and there is like a line and then number four so either first cylinder or the fourth cylinder are in fire are firing right now and you can determine which one of them is it by just looking at the uh, fuel pump so you're just spinning the engine the right way so in the you can see it, it it's it's spinning this way so it's in the how can you say that in the left left side okay and you will just see which one of these just lifts a fuel a little bit and in my case the cylinder number one lifted a fuel so it's the first one in, in firing right now so next just remove these four bolts one two three four and pull the fuel pump out <coughs> I forgot to tell you before you loosen all four bolts uh, you need to mark your uh, angle of your fuel pump so I cleaned it off just now you have a line here and three lines on the timing case so just make sure that you record or remember where your fuel pump was adjusted so mine is between the second and the third if you can see I can't focus so as you see each of these four bolts has a has a, a slot so you can rotate the pump to uh, make your timing a bit advanced or retarded so just make sure that you remember that otherwise you will have some issues later and you will have to look for the proper timing and that's pain in the ass